The fact is that this race is not over. Many in the media want to say it's over for the 12th time they're counting Donald Trump out. We know we can win this, and we are certainly not exceeding to the same chattering class that's been wrong about Donald Trump for about a year and a half. 16 days until the election, and Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway pledging today on Fox that this race is far from over, and she's even detailed the path to victory. So, are the mainstream media and the naysayers once again underestimating Donald Trump? Let's ask my all-star political panel, Republican strategist and Fox News contributor Tony Sayek, and Democratic strategist Richard Fowler. So, gentlemen, get your engine started. What do you think? Tony, I'll start with you. Um, Donald Trump, he's been the comeback kid several times. Can he do it again? We've got 16 days or so left. It's like T minus 16. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, the, uh, the underestimation of Donald Trump has been the main story of the 2016 presidential race. Also, the fact that he overperforms polls almost every single time, largely because, Kimberly, polls are not calibrated to really pick up what we know are Trump voters, people who are not habitually coming out to sure. the polls, number one. Number two, I do think there is an effect where people don't necessarily be as bold about their support for Donald Trump in indicating that in polls versus what they are in reality. But what Kellyanne was talking about was the electoral map. Sure. And when you look at it, Ohio, Iowa, excellent early voting results for Donald Trump. He's still in fairly good shape in those states. Florida, North Carolina, Nevada, Colorado, New Hampshire, Maine, all states in which he's within the margin of error. Mm -hmm. So those are critical, obviously, to the electoral map to get to 270. But even a state like Michigan, for example, that she mentioned in her interview, he's within five or six points in a state like that where it's a big Democrat state. He's not spent a lot of time campaigning there. But that just shows you the macro dynamics of this race are for a change election that benefits an outsider. That's exactly where Trump is positioned. And how about hitting, you know, that message? That's the thing. Now, I'm going to bring you in here because Trump is trying to say drain the swamp, okay? Drain the swamp of people like Hillary Clinton, people that have been in D.C. doing the same thing with ineffective results year after year. Uh, is your side worried about that kind of messaging? Because it does seem like the outsiders were prevailing, especially with candidates like Bernie Sanders, and Trump is echoing some of those same sentiments. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Kimberly. Uh, it's good to be nice on with to you. See uh, you. Uh, it's good to see you, too. Uh, but here's, there's a couple things here with the Trump campaign I think they're missing. So this argument about draining the swamp, there's no question that Washington's broken. I think that's both Democrats and Republicans agree. Washington is broken, but both parties are just as guilty for breaking it. Uh, my, uh, Donald Trump's running mate, Michael Pence, was bat in, the, in that building behind me, was there for 12 years. And in 12 years, he didn't fix any of the problems that Donald Trump espoused and needs to be fixed. Um, but to sort of go against what Tony was saying, and, and I agree with Tony, and here's the thing, I think... You know, you have this L.A. tracking poll um, that we heard a lot through the show. I don't think that's a very good poll because they're only, only talking to 400, the same 400 people over and over again. So those people are going to be more tuned into the media because they know that they're being polled. But if you look at the individual battleground states, the reason why it's very, very hard for the Trump campaign to pull this one off, as Carl Rove said this morning on Fox News Sunday, is because there's too many battleground states that they have to, there's too much territory they have to defend. Now Arizona's a toss-up. Utah is possibly a toss-up. Up. Texas is too close to call. With all these states that Donald Trump's going to have to defend, there's no way he can hunker down and just stay in Ohio and just stay in Florida. The map is just too mm -hmm. big for him, which is what makes this race so problematic for the Trumpster. I, I would be delighted if Hillary Clinton spent the next two weeks going to Arizona and Texas and Georgia, <laughs> states she's frankly not going she's, to she win. But she doesn't have well, to, Tony. Listen, and Richard, you're, you're not wrong to suggest that clearly the map is broad for Donald Trump, but his power to get the attention, the fact that he doesn't need the resources she needs to even penetrate. She has spent $66 million in TV ads alone in September. She's still under 50% in every national poll, in every battleground state. That makes it fertile terrain for Donald Trump to really go in there and hone his message and pick up those type of votes, Richard. And the reality yeah. is, in, in the close of this campaign, and you're absolutely right when you say that this problem of the establishment is not just for Democrats, it's for Republicans too. But guess what Donald Trump has done? He's positioned himself very appropriately as the nonpartisan option to do reform, to change this well, entire system, well, on, and not second, be beholden to partisan special hold elite on, interests. Hold on. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like I said, Washington's broken. But we already know that Donald Trump's plan to quote-unquote fixing Washington is just not going to work. Mark Zandy said that? himself... 
I, I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you. Don't I appreciate worry. that. Uh, Mark Zandi, who's a famous economist, has said that Donald Trump's plan for the economy would harpoon this economy and create a deeper recession than we saw in 2008. I'm not saying that. Hillary Clinton's not saying that. Mark Zandi, as well as Romney's old economist, is saying that. That's number one. Number two, let's take a look at this map. Hillary doesn't have to go to Arizona, right? She sent Michelle Obama to Arizona, Bernie Sanders in Arizona over the weekend. I, I'm pretty, I want to say this week, Elizabeth Warren is going to Arizona, where Hillary's going to spend her time is in making sure that she maintains the firewall that she needs to get to 270. Robbie Mook said on Fox News Sunday earlier today that we're worried about getting to 270. And if you look at the map, if you look at the polling, if you talk to all the pollsters, all the data geeks in the world, they will all tell you that this map favors Hillary Clinton. And yeah, the that's reason not why, news, Richard. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. And the reason why this map favors Hillary Clinton is not because Donald Trump is necessarily missing in message, but he gave a, the, the, the latter half of his speech um, yesterday at Gettysburg was great. The too bad he spent the first 15 minutes of it bringing up old news and old things and doubling down on a well, strategy he, that poll after poll shows does not work to get to the American people. It doesn't get to women. It doesn't get to college-educated voters. It's who he needs to win this election. R Richard, it's, it's... There it is there. It's always sort of favored the Democrats, it, it, so it's it, a problem that, the way it's set up. That's the point, Kimberly. I mean, it's not breaking news to say the map favors Hillary Clinton. It favors every Democrat. The difference in this race is the fact that Donald Trump has put into play the upper Midwest, Rust Belt states like Michigan, like Wisconsin, Wisconsin, like Iowa, which are not traditionally favorable toward Republicans. Very true. And if you look very at the true. fact that in his third debate performance, mm -hmm. I actually think it was very smart. His message and his pitch wasn't just to Republican voters. It was a lot to those broader, Reagan Democrat yeah. voters who truly feel left out of the economy that has been created under eight years, which is a government-centered, controlled economy, bad trade deals, no manufacturing growth, yeah. no wage growth. These voters Tony, understand I, that Donald Trump I, is the I, only one who has their back. No, I agree that the, the, I agree that we have the, 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 the working families have been left out of this equation for far too long in Washington. But people just do not believe that Donald Trump is the candidate that's going to make that happen. And this is how you know this is this is how you know this, this is a reality, Kimberly. Well, yeah. It's because you have to look at the. Quick.